Hey y'all, today we're gonna show you how we make a crock pot cola barbecue pulled pork in our slow cooker, and we're gonna go to the ruins of Casa Grande. Oh, we're having a whole lot of fun. Ooh, he burped in his kitchen. That's right, my house, I can. <coughs> Hi, welcome back to another edition of Cooking Chris's Dishes with the Good Old Boy, where we're cooking up dishes straight from recipes that crock my beautiful wife's cooking blog, and we're cooking it straight from our camper kitchen as of now in uh, Pikachu, Picacho. Tucson. Tucson, yes. We're actually in a place called Picacho, Arizona, which is north of Tucson, east of Tucson. Northwest, baby. Northwest. <laughs> You don't know where you are. Where are we? We're northwest. It's northwest Tucson. We are northwest of Tucson, southeast of Phoenix. We're in Arizona, okay? <laughs> We're in Arizona, the Grand Canyon State. You ever been there? If not, you should really go because there's some really cool stuff. We got here a couple days ago, and we've seen some cool things. Then Chris left me. <laughs> she came back, though, because she always comes back. But Chris had to fly back home for a meeting, and then she came back, and we did a little exploring yesterday and went to the Saguaro um national park correct yeah i didn't know it was a well i didn't know it was a forest or not because they call it the cactus forest and when you pull in you see why because out of nowhere <laughs> saguaro cactuses everywhere great big ones you know the ones that look like this <laughs> the cactus looks like that some of them look like this some of them look like this that's where we were but today we're going to go to the casa grande ruins and I know nothing about them quite yet, so when we come back from this, I will tell you everything I know, which will probably be plenty because I like to read. But before we do that, we're going to need something for dinner. And if y'all remember them barbecue cola ribs we made a few days back, y'all remember them? We got quite a few comments that y'all made them right away. So. And they have not, and I keep thinking about them. Uh -huh. I keep thinking a lot about them. My wife really liked them. I think it was that extra cumin you wanted to put in there. Exactly. So she formulated the recipe, put it on the blog. If you haven't seen it, go to recipesthatcrock.com. Search for the ribs. should be the first kind of rib recipe that pops up. But we decided we want to do some pulled pork that same way because we both like pulled pork barbecue. We love barbecue, but we're also doing low carb. So we thought, I say we, she told me, but you know, we're a team here, that we <laughs> want to use that same recipe, try it on pulled pork and see how it works. So... What you're going to need to do that are the following ingredients. Pork. We have it in our slow cooker right now. If you can see down there, there's two of them. That's because we want between, was it four and five or five and six pounds? Five and, well, I would have went, I wanted around five. Mm -hmm. And this is boneless pork shoulder. You can go bigger if you want more. Depends on the size of your slow cooker. But right. if you look in there, them two little roasts, which made about five pounds, yeah. just about fills up the slow cooker. So that's, and that, and there's three of us. Well, four if you count the dog, but he can't have any. So <laughs> more for me. So pork, we're using the pork shoulder. If you look right here, if you could see fat side up that way, when it renders, it goes down into you the meat. You can use loin if you would prefer. Loin would work. Right. It might cook a little, it may not cook as long. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to use pork shoulder because that's what we like. We know it cooks down tender. We really like the meat. So we got our pork and then you're going to need the following ingredients. You will need, and I've got all kinds of stuff here on my cutting board. You need a half a teaspoon of melted butter. And then I'm going to go with all my dry and semi dry ingredients. You need a half a cup of fresh or finely chopped onion freshly chopped would be good too but finely chopped onion i'm going to say that's closer to a cup but i used a half an onion we're going to use the other half later in another recipe that we want but i like the onion so we're going to use a little more half a cup of onion you want a tablespoon and a half of minced dried garlic you want to have a teaspoon of cajun seasoning we love slap you mama so that's what we use around here you also want to have a half teaspoon of paprika paprika however you say it tomato tomato potato potato let's call the whole thing off you also want to have a tablespoon of cumin because your my wife likes it who knows if your wife likes it or your husband but it's it really good really adds a it great gives a good flavor. smoky earthy flavor to it so i highly recommend it you want a half teaspoon of pepper and you also want salt to taste that's our dry semi dry ingredients you also want to have a cup and a quarter of cola now i was asked about the ribs about this if somebody doesn't want to use a diet cola they just want a full-on fledged cola can you use root beer can you use dr you pepper can use full sugar i'm gonna say yes you could use coke pepsi 
anything like that. Something that's going to give it a sugary flavor. Uh, they asked about Dr. Pepper or root yeah. beer. Keep We've away. got a really good friend that makes well, a root beer roast. Well, we do too, honey. Yeah, and... and we have all those things. Heck, we've even used cream soda before. Yes. Remember oh, the, on the red roast. Mm -hmm. Another one you all should check out. Easiest pork roast you'll ever make mm -hmm. using big red soda. If you don't get big red soda where you're at, move. Ah. And so what I use for that Coke Zero are these little bitty baby cans. And it uses about a can and a half of the itty bitty baby cans. So you're like, what are you going to do with the rest of that cola? Oh, goodness. Oh, is this you being manly? Oh, I thought you were going to crush the can. Uh, oh, gross. You don't necessarily need to do that in your kitchen because that is bad. Bad manners. It's uncouth. But boy, I and felt people better. will leave you lots of comments about I'm it. sure. Here come the comments. Ooh, he burped in his kitchen. That's right. My house. I can. <coughs> so now next <laughs> is one little can, which is three quarters cup of tomato paste. Tomato paste right there. A friend of ours didn't have tomato paste that he used, uh, like uh, he used Rotel, which is the, the the crushed tomatoes, sometimes with spices, without. He said it turned out really good. So if you don't have some recipes, you want to try something new. I'm not gonna get mad at you. I'm yeah, not. but do it your own way. Yeah, do it <laughs> as they as as an Ario Speedwagon says it. Go your own way. <laughs> and then you also want one tablespoon of W sauce, Shire sauce, Worcestershire Shire sauce. What's that there sauce? I've heard it called all kinds of stuff. And chovy juice. Look at the ingredients. You'll know. And then you also want to use one teaspoon of liquid smoke. This goes in lieu of doing a slow cooked over barbecue. If you want that smoky flavor, this will do it. This is mesquite. It's really good. I stand by it. So let's go ahead and put these all in a bowl. I'll go ahead and get my liquid smoke. Go, ooh, make sure I use the right, the right tools here. So my teaspoon, oh, that's got a flip top lid. You think I'd know that. One teaspoon of liquid smoke in a bowl. Three tablespoons of mustard. Did I tell them about the mustard? I can't remember. Hey, there's mustard. It wasn't just sitting there for hot dogs. Three tablespoons of mustard <laughs> inside the spoon, not on the outside. Two, three. And while I am getting this together, my lovely wife, my beautiful assistant, and my boss is going to go get me a little bee spatula right above her head. Please. Let me grab my tablespoon of W sauce. Shire sauce. Worcestershire, Worcestershire. Whole lot of arguments about this here stuff. She's not watching. I heard you. Thank you, spatula lady. I'll clean off my my bowl or my spoon and fling mustard everywhere. I will definitely have to clean that up later. She made me do all of the dishes prior to the taping of this. Yes, I did. After I fried her a bunch of bacon. Yes, I did. That whip is a cracking today. <laughs> all right, so we'll put that there for now. Our can, which is three quarter cup of tomato paste, tomato paste, whatever you want to say. Use your own accent, call it what you want. Right in there. And then our tablespoon of butter in the bowl. Our cola, one and one quarter cup of cola in a bowl. And then you also want to add to that one half cup of water. Freshly squeezed H2O will work just fine in the bowl. And then I'll take all my pretty ingredients here. Pardon the mustard that's on there, but ooh. if you look, I made it all pretty for you. Doesn't it kind of look like one of them palettes that Bob Ross would use to paint happy little trees? We're going to make happy little pork today. And we'll take all that right in the bowl. See if we can get it all in there without going all over the countertop. And I want to give a shout out to the many wonderful ladies who are part of our crock posse who a long time ago gave me some advice about a sliding cutting board. Because when you're cutting something up, the last thing you want to happen is for your cutting board to slide and you take your knife through your hand. 
And if you will notice, I'm using that very method right now, which is where you take a wet paper towel, put it beneath your surface and your cutting board, and it didn't slip. And I still have all 10 fingers. <laughs> so thanks you again, ladies. Thank you again. Now I will take and mix up my stuff. And evidently that means fling it all over the counter. I really need to not do that because I really will have to clean that up later. As well as do all the dishes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> she oh. makes me do it all, guys. Oh my goodness. All right, we get her all mixed up in there. And the big thing that you really want to make sure it gets mixed up is that tomato paste. That's what's going to take a minute to do to break all that down. But if you put that in there with them onions, them onions will kind of chop it up for you. Looks like. Right in there. And then before I put that on my pork, which by the way, that smells so good. That makes like one of the most perfect sauces ever. Oh. I want to definitely salt my pig. So, with your salt, salt pig, pig <laughs> salted pig. If I do this, a salted pig. <laughs> Michael. But now I can't put my fingers back in the salt. So we'll do this. Oh my goodness. I didn't think about that part. Do this, do this. Now, in the comments below, if you've seen it, salt bay. Gosh. <laughs> I'm gonna use up the rest of the salt. You wanna season this pork pretty well with this salt. A, a whole lot of salt goes well in a whole lot of pig. I won't be bashful with it, but I won't like super salt it because I can always put more salt in it later. But you want a good crust on top of there. And then, once you've assaulted your pig, take your sauce right over the top of your swine. Oh my gosh, that smells so good. I'm excited. You just wait until we get back. I know. <clears throat> I'm, I'm really, really, really looking forward to this. So, first off, I guess I should apologize. You shouldn't belch on camera. You shouldn't <laughs> belch in public, period. Everybody does it, really. Are you going to tell them what you and Aunt Lou have been doing? We have a new app on our phones. It's called Voxer. It's a free app that instead of texting somebody, you just push the button down and talk. And it's kind of like giving them instant voicemails back and forth. So it's kind of like having a phone conversation whenever you want to, which is really inconvenient when it's with Lou. But anyway... <laughs> you are so awful. Uh, we've been sending each other burps back and forth. I won't play them for you because <laughs> hers are a lot louder than mine, and that's not ladylike, and I want to oh know, keep gosh. up the image that she's a lady. Oh my but, gosh. Yeah, don't do that because we don't want to ruin oh. this video get it because we're going to the casa ruins you want to go with us do you well first thing you need to do is put a lid on your pork and then you consult the boss and say how long and how high low for eight hours. low for eight hours so we will come back in eight hours and we will check out the pork but for now we're going to go check out the casa grande ruins are you in new day new hat of course. Here's a new hat for me. Uh, and yeah. Sombrero. We got Addie a new hat too. I should really pay attention to it. Yeah, you got it. There's road construction here. going on through here. And, uh, keep right, keep left. Keep road right, closed. keep left. Road closed. <laughs> that was funny. Like, we're like, okay. <laughs> so they're doing road construction down here in Picacho. And they have the most creative signs here the the road is really little tiny narrow yeah and you come up and it says keep right keep left like and then you pull and then you keep going it says road closed right in front of you and then it turns you back to the left but you really have to pay attention <laughs> why didn't they just put up one sign that says stay in the middle uh, or it felt like the scarecrow was telling us which <laughs> yeah. way to go so we are on our way to the Casa Grande ruins. Yes. And oh my gosh, these roads are so narrow. I am so glad I am not taking the RV down this. Yeah. Road construction everywhere. Um, it looks like they're building new bridges over the railroad tracks down here. So that's fun to drive through. Um, I got a new hat. Yes. Y'all like it? In the comments below. Yay or nay? Stay on Arizona 87 North. Oh, but they haven't heard the best part of the hat. 
the best part of the hat? The accent that goes with the hat. It's kind of like an Aussie hat. So, rise up lights. <laughs> I, I got a good night, mate. I got I to gotta work on my... They wanted me to... But that wants me no, to... No, you're not there yet, babe. No, no. Oh, oh. Just go straight. Keep left. But go right. <laughs> so confused. <laughs> Like, see, I think there was a buy one, get one free on these signs. Because every time you see keep right, it says keep left. 18 miles. <laughs> okay, so we're about 18 miles away from where we're going. <sighs> if, um, if we can if we get there, stay yeah, on the okay. straight and narrow. Oh, it's 25 through here. I'm going a lot faster. Okay. Hey, it's the end of the road work. We're good. Now we can now we We've can get come to the end of the road work. Oh, now we can go fast. They like to drive fast. Out here, they have the need. The need for speed. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> You're supposed to... <laughs> Maverick and Goose, come on. <laughs> Casa Grande Ruins. Yes. We have no idea what we're getting into down here. Nope. But I'm texting uh, Mima the uh, standard picture right now. Yeah. <laughs> We have to take a picture by every sign. Because that's what mom did when I was little. And I have been told that if I don't get a picture of my kid in front of every sign, I'm going to be in trouble. Uh, yes, it, he's going to make me mom unhappy, so. Nobody wants to make mom mad. <laughs> and I was sending pretty pictures back to mom and dad and all that kind of, because they like to travel out here too. And I got the response from my father that said um, he prefers the ones with his grandchild in them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No Once big. you have kids, you know where you stand in the family. <laughs> oh, wow. That's pretty cool. There's like a pa yeah. pavilion over it. Well, yeah, I think it's to protect it. Well, that's cool. Yeah. Everybody watching is like, pavilion over what? <laughs> this! And why are you doing a Junior Ranger book? Because I want to get Junior Ranger badges from every place. Awesome. So here is the closet. People used to farm here, uh -huh. and in the winter they would work out in here. Oh really? Yeah, and they would stay in the shade of those walls in the summer. Gotcha. And also it says here that they, that children help make articles, and also they were making art. Art? Yes, art. You're all about that. Yes, art. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> <laughs> So, this. Uh oh. This is the Casa Grande. Yes. Or, I'm guessing, uh, Grand House. There you go. It's like Grand House. Yes. And Big what house. What was it built for? So, people are finding. It's not. It's not. They're not sure of it yet. Yeah. But they've been finding things about a very rare lunar event that happens here spring and fall equinoxes. Solstice. So they think it might have to do with like watching the stars and that yes, kind of thing. Because it's always talking about the sun and mm -hmm. the moon and the stars. What's other what other things that are interesting that happen around here for the like the farming? Uh, well, irrigation. Yes. So there's they a lot. to move all the water over here. Yeah. To for the because for the it farming. doesn't rain much in the desert. Yep. It doesn't rain much. Okay. And this is the plaza where they grew all the stuff. All right. And here's the Casa Grande. Yes, it's... As you can see, you cannot go in. 
No, because they're trying to protect it. But some of those others we were allowed to go in, weren't we? Yeah. Go on up. <laughs> Depends how old you are. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> okay, what are those three things you saw at the cocktail? Uh, you saw rattlesnake skin, a scorpion, and some, something that, that's inside of the, the cactus. Where the birds live? Yeah. What you, what's on the end of the rattlesnake? That was cool. Yes. Casa Grande. And I will say. It means Grand House. Yeah. I'll tell great you. house. Yeah. That's what Addie said. That's right. It's great. Grand, grand House. Um, Aki's letting you know Big how house. wonderful the outside was. Of all the Ranger programs that we've had, Addie's got a special goal that every place we go, she wants to um, earn a Junior Ranger badge. And of all the places that we went, this has been the most engaged. Of the, of the rangers. Now, there are lots of places really great rangers, but multiple rangers were engaging with her here. Um, they have a, like a, a touch, like a, a place where they have all kinds of things that um, the junior rangers can touch. So they had like rattlesnake skins. They had a um, scorpion that was in amber, wasn't it? I touched him too. Yeah. Was oh, awesome. my other junior ranger, yeah. you didn't earn your badge I didn't today. get a badge, but I got to touch <laughs> a rattlesnake skin. I'm good. But, but um, they also showed her, um, and I wasn't recording this, so I'm sorry, but they showed her that the inside of a cactus where the birds live, um, it actually um, solidifies so that after the cactus dies, only the woody parts and then the, the ribs the ribs and then the bird houses inside actually survive when a cactus dies and so they had one that she could touch and look at and and all that kind of stuff so anyhow very cool program and then when she became a ranger they did a full-blown ceremony um complete with announcing it to everyone in the place they pretty and much held a pageant for you Ranger discount, which I got National Park Yahtzee. <laughs> Woo! I know so what we're doing in there. If, if you earn a, uh, a Junior Ranger badge, you also get 15% off um, of something in the gift shop. So, that's that's. And I got Yahtzee. So, Addie got Yahtzee, so we're going to be playing Yahtzee tonight. Yay! Well, backstory on Casa Grande. It does, it means grand house, big house, large house, because that's what it is. A song about it. I wonder if they ever saw this place. <laughs> um, this was th this is in the Sonoran Desert where there were I think they said there were six tribes um, that were um, all together. They called them the Hohokam, which was like the nation around the nation down here. I think if I'm doing this wrong, feel Someone free to correct, correct me in the us. comments. I'm sure they'll have it anyway. <laughs> but um, the Hohokam was a large group of people around here and then you had different different tribes of it so it would be like we've got america america you got americans and then you got the goods and the smiths and the ferrets and the, and the joneses and everything they made up america where this is the hohokam which was with different and i don't know all the names of the different tribes nor would i try to pronounce them to you guys i would be bad at it but uh as this place grew uh they this was definitely a farming community and they started uh, building canals that linked the Gila River, which is just down the way here, and linked it to their land. And they grew things like corn and cotton um, and beans, I think was another thing. Really? And they, they ate. They ate some really cool stuff. Cool. Um, and then the corn, if you saw the corn in there, like their corn, um, or corn ears, the corn of ears were like that mm -hmm. big which was, that's the way it used to be back in the day. 
corn was real small so you saw like these little cylinders they had that they would use to shuck the corn and stuff like that and then all the different tools they made out of the different stones either to grind corn or to grind the flour that they retrieved from these pods from the mesquite trees i didn't know you could eat stuff off the of mesquite i just thought it was used to grill I grill didn't steaks know with either. what's well, my kid doing she's she, uh, she said she didn't get something from back there I think, I think she's getting something to drink i think either oh. she's I don't know. Anyway, that was named, did you know, we're going everywhere here, Casa Grande was named from a Jesuit priest, uh, a Spanish Jesuit priest that, that said, hey, this is a big house, and so they called it the big house, the grand house, Casa Grande. But anyway, they, they petitioned to have this place protected, and in the 1890s, I think it was 1892, I believe, that uh, uh, President Benjamin Harrison cordoned off a one mile square area around Casa Grande and said this is a protected place and this became the very first um, cultural preserved center. Really? So of all the national parks and everything, this wasn't the first national park, but this is the first place where they said we're going to res we're going to preserve the culture and the is that, land. Does that mean it was the first national monument? Because that's kind of it the difference It didn't become a national two. monument until under Coolidge in the 1900s. But here's a cool thing. President Harrison, who made this a first, was also the first president, actually the only president, from Indiana. He's a Hoosier! <laughs> um, but Everything comes full circle. Everything comes full circle. There's a little <laughs> bit of Indiana down here in Arizona. But the National Park Services are doing a great job mm -hmm. at not only preserving these places, protecting these places, doing upkeep on these places to keep them held together so that Miss Ad and Miss Ad's kids and Miss Ad's grandkids could potentially be able to come down and see this, but they're doing a great job at educating people too. Oh, I just I love how um, you can tell that most of the people who work at these places really are like doing what they were made to do. Because, they do a good job. Yeah, and you know when they see someone with interest like Addie, who's like, yeah, I'm gonna learn all about these places they like pour into her like nothing else and i just i just love that i love love seeing people do what they were meant to do and i love seeing people um who um have a passion for something and then they just they love to share that with other people so yeah it's really cool i think we need some cola barbecue pulled pork I'd argue with you, That's but you're right. To happen. And Again. then we will play our apple rounds. And, and then we're going to play, play a round of National, National Park, Park Yahtzee. Yahtzee. No, a couple rounds. Oh, oh a couple. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> and we're back from our adventures in Casa Grande in Coolidge, Arizona. Did you know that Coolidge, Arizona was named after Calvin Coolidge, who commissioned Casa Grande as a national monument? There you go. The more you know. Stop. <laughs> but it's out. But there's a rainbow too. Oh, there's a rainbow. I, I think maybe oh, it's a star with a rainbow. Star rainbow. The better. Yeah. That, okay. The yeah. more you know. But now we're hungry, and it's time to get into our cola barbecue pork roast that we got going on in the slow cooker. It just went off after eight hours, so now we're going to test it out and see if it's ready. And you'll know if it's edible, if it is shreddable. You know what I'm saying? It smells amazing in here. When we came back in the, the RV here about an hour or so ago, it smelled so good, but we knew we had to wait on it. So watch this. Whew. Right into the meat. Right through the meat. Very, very tender. And I can take my fork and do that. And she falls apart. Oh, my goodness. So if yes. it didn't, what should you do? Keep it on low and keep going. Check it in an hour. Gotcha. And then if it doesn't work, keep it on low and check it in an hour. And then if that doesn't work, keep it on low and, well, what kind of meat did you buy? Because I would say after eight to ten hours, this this thing is going to be, well, this is what it's doing in eight. It's, it's completely shreddable. Yeah. And if we were at our home kitchen, or had we brought our stand-up mixer, our standalone mixer trick is really good is a really good way to shred your roast now we're camping so it's all primitive with our slow cooker in our well-lit rv with two nice forks but this works just as well take two forks and shred it just pull that meat across the grain and she pulls right apart there 
But if you wanted to do this with a standalone mixer, let's say you make this recipe, you should make this recipe, then you would take your roast and put it in your standalone mixer and set it on low and within 30 seconds to a minute, it'll all be shredded up. Don't go any longer than that or you'll take your nice shredded pork roast and turn it into cat food. You would make your cats happy, but not you so much. So look at that. That just shredded up so good and I'll shred it up more as we go. But frankly, I just want to get a bite and eat this. So let's set that to the side. Frankly, my dear. Frankly, my dear, I'm going to get some pork roast. Oh, it smells so good. Now this is the same ingredients. These are the same ingredients that we used for our ribs. And I know they tasted good. Let's just see how well this worked when this soaked in to our pork roast. You want to see? I'll come up to you. Excuse me, I'll tell you. Look at that. Few passes with a fork and it shreds up just like it would if you were doing pulled pork anywhere else. Oh, it's hot. Mm. Oh my gosh. Is it as good as the ribs? It is? Yay! Now, when I think of pork barbecue, like pulled pork, I think of a sweet barbecue sauce, like a really sweet barbecue sauce. This is not. It's got a little sweetness in it. But none of the ingredients I had had a lot of sugar in it. Why? Because we're doing it low carb. But it's good just like it is. This would go good with some beans, maybe some rice, maybe wrapped in a tortilla. <sighs> Pulled pork tacos. Yeah. Telling you right now, that's one way to do it. If you wanted to make it sweet, but you still wanted to go low carb, what do you think about um, the brown sugar substitute? My wife's down there, so I'm looking at her too. You could add a little. Maybe a little brown sugar substitute to it. If you don't want to do low carb, do regular cola. Put some brown sugar with it. Maybe pour in some barbecue sauce. Whatever you want to do. Just smile when you eat it because it's good. Mm -mm -mm. The onions are really good in it. Adds another layer of texture that you're chewing into. I didn't chop them as fine this time and I like it that way. Because it gives another element to it. Mm -mm -mm. There's a smokiness of it. With that mesquite liquid smoke that we put in there. It's salty enough because we salt bait it and of course all the other spices that are along with it just make it really good this has got a lot of flavor and this pulled pork is going to have a lot of potential through the rest of this week and some leftover dishes that we're going to do mm -hmm. if there's any leftovers if you'll leave the leftovers well there's only about five pounds so i don't know if it's going to last much more longer mm -hmm. than with me standing here but we hope you like what we're doing here <laughs> and if you did there's just a little bit left. Give me a second. This is so rude. My house. If you like what you saw, whether it's the travel or the food or my new hat, give us a like down below. Also, if you haven't become a member of the Croc Posse, click the little button down below that says subscribe. And now you're a member of the Croc Posse. Welcome. Also click the little bell next to the subscribe button. It'll let you know anytime that we upload a new video. We try to upload as many as we possibly can to stay in contact with the loved ones that we call our crock posse. We thank you guys. And if you would, laugh often, eat good food, and speak life. See you guys later. Bye. I'm going to go get me another great big sample of that pulled pork. Hi, welcome back. Tinkle, tinkle, little girl. I'm Tinkerbell. I'm fixing glitter balls, so. <laughs> Here you go. Watch the podcast to know what that was about. <laughs> Three, two. I don't think so. How much pork could a pulled pork pull if a pulled pork could pull pork? <laughs>